we gear up for our fourth, yes it's hard to believe this will be the fourth major revision to SPV3, we have another set of pretty significant changes that add new features and increase the overall quality of the mod. For this video, however, we're just going to go over the top 10 biggest features and changes. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 10. Updated post-processing. In SPV 3.2, the addition of post-processing was one of the most important features of the update, providing new features to the mod which weren't possible before, such as ambient occlusion, high dynamic range, water droplets on the visor, as well as the interactive visor itself. Depth of field was also added for cinematics. With SPV 3.3, we've updated several of these systems. The two biggest ones are the high dynamic range and the ambient occlusion implementations. The new HDR system helps reduce what are known as crushed blacks, which was part of the problem with people complaining about the brightness of the mod. What was basically happening was that the game was darkening areas that were already dark, but doing so in a way where you're losing detail in the fine lines and objects within the dark spaces. The new HDR solution fixes this. This new system is also dynamic, much like what Halo 3 had. It actually builds on what Halo 3 did, where being in a dark space and looking at a bright space will change how your eyes adjust to the different exposures. In short, dark areas will be darker and bright areas brighter. An even bigger change is a new ambient occlusion system we've implemented. Ambient occlusion provides shadows on corners and other crevices on surfaces. It's been completely revamped to be even faster performing than it was before, but it also uses the game's normal maps to produce the needed effects. This has one very cool and requested feature. Halo's normal maps on geometry now render without dynamic light, similarly to how they did on the original Xbox. The result is not quite the same, but it adds much needed depth to the environments and characters throughout the game. Number 9. Ray Tracing Technically, this falls under updated post-processing, but it is a big enough update that it gets its own spot. We've added a ray tracing solution that uses screen space reflections to provide new effects throughout the game. As you move through the environments, you'll see lights reflected in the floor as you move around them. Weapons will also reflect their surroundings, allowing anything in the environment to reflect off of them. Projectiles also reflect off surfaces, so flames from the flamethrower will reflect off metallic surfaces and plasma bolts will show up on the walls as they travel through the air. This works on tandem with the new ambient occlusion system that was developed, as the reflections will curve as they pass over the normal maps. While this system works on any graphics card, it is important to note that it is very expensive. I have a 1060 with 6 gigabytes of RAM, and even I can't get a consistent 60 FPS with this on. It will be quite a while before people can play this at 4K 60 FPS. It's important to differentiate between ray trace green space reflections and global illumination. The ray tracing does not affect the lighting of the levels. However, let's look at point number 8, and that is updated lighting. Now, while this is unrelated to ray tracing, it does involve the new dynamic HDR system we put into the mod. We've updated the lighting in certain levels to make things more clear. New advancements in the community have allowed us to have higher resolution light maps than we did before, as well as have light maps with less compression. In addition, the extra time we have had to develop this update has allowed us to re-render and update some of the lighting as well. Certain areas of the project are now just brighter and more visible from us rerunning with different settings. In the case of the Silent Cartographer Evolve, we've added a new customization feature where you can change the lighting from being midday like it was in previous releases to sunset like it was in the original release. Number 7. General Quality of Life Improvements This is pretty much a given, but we fixed bugs, reduced crashes, identified inconsistencies, and done general cleanups in multiple areas. We unfortunately ended up really pressed for time with the last release and developing six new missions while testing the 11 existing ones really put a drain on our testers and ability to test while so busy. With the public beta testing we've conducted in our Discord for 3.3, we've been able to identify a number of issues we were previously unaware of, some of them dating back to the original 3.0 release. We've also added some new dialogue and cut sequences from files and research that were done into the leaked 1749 build of Halo CE over the summer. Number 6. New Weapons We've added seven new weapons to the mod. Four of these weapons are exclusive to the firefight mode, which we will go into more detail about later. Lemuria gets an extra exclusive weapon as well, and the regular campaign gets two new weapons. Kind of. The incineration cannons which the enforcers used can now be used by the player after destroying them. We've also totally reworked the piercer so it functions like the mangler from Halo Infinite, with a few extra bonuses. In the Lemoria campaign, the chain gun seen in SPV-1 and the Halo 1999 builds makes an appearance. In Firefight, there are four new weapons that can be unlocked. These are the Sentinel Bolt Shot, Sentinel Suppressor, 
Sentinel Railgun slash Spartan Laser, and the Golden Gun, which is a special version of the pistol that can kill anything in one shot. However, there is only one bullet per magazine. You will also see Captain Keys use this weapon in Firefight. Number 5. Updated Vehicles and Health Systems We've also added some new vehicle variants to the game, which are unique to Lemuria. A new anti-personnel wraith has been added, which fires projectiles which are more deadly to infantry than vehicles. This has also been adapted to a version of the Shade Turret as well. But more importantly is the new vehicle health system. Prior versions of SPV-3 had a system similar to that of Halo 2 and 3, where your shields determined whether a vehicle would take damage. In SPV-3.3, it is in closer alignment to Reach 4 and 5. Now, vehicle health is broken into three segments, a blue, yellow, and a red state, in which the health can recharge from. So if your vehicle health dips down into the yellow, it can never fully recharge to blue. It would always be in the yellow. And if it dips from yellow to red, it will always be in red with only 33% of the health left. The benefits of this system are that it is overall more stable, but it also means a player's vehicle will never have more overall HP than an enemy's, so you can have more even duels between vehicles like you could in the original game. It also helps lessen the impact of small arms fire against the vehicles, as the recharging health means stray bullets or plasma can cause permanent damage unless the small arms fire is concentrated. Number 4. Skulls Skulls are meant to be the biggest feature of SPV 3.3, but instead they ended up being here in spot number 4. We decided to remove skulls in SPV 3.2, as we knew we would need to investigate what we wanted to do with them for SPV 3.3 with Firefight. For 3.2, it didn't make much sense to take the time to develop and test them when we knew we would want to revise them anyway later on down the road. As it would turn out, not all skulls in Firefight would work in Campaign, and vice versa. We ended up creating 15 new skulls for Campaign, all which have some pretty significant impacts on how you approach the game. We'll go over this in more detail in the future, but here is a brief overview of them. First up is the Four Eye Skull. The Four Eye Skull makes your vision get blurrier as your health takes damage. This only happens when your shields are down. We then have the Spite Skull. This causes damage to your shields every time you fire your weapon, stopping them from recharging. We have the Pinata Skull, which ignoring the description here, just makes grenades more rare to be used by enemies and to be dropped. Then we have the Speed Demon Skull. The Speed Demon Skull was designed to speed up the game by 15%. We also have the Key Skull making a return. With the Key Skull, vehicles cannot be piloted by the player. We also have the Awareness Skull added once again, which makes enemies always able to hear you, always prioritize you above all else. This means there's no way to use stealth anymore. The Fog Skull returns from the official games, which disables your motion tracker. The Meatbag Skull is a new addition to Halo as well. Player health is increased, but your shields will not regenerate once depleted. The Unity Skull is a new version of the Anger Skull from previous releases. The Covenant, Flood, and Sentinels will all unite against you and work as one team. The Blind Skull returns from other games, disabling your HUD. Unlike other games, this doesn't get rid of your first person weapons or arms. That can be disabled in the launcher through photo mode. We've created a new skull called the Jeb Skull. Your energy weapon batteries quickly become exhausted. By simply holding the energy weapon, the battery will start to deplete, as if it were overcharged like the plasma pistol. The Ford Skull disables the new vehicle health system. Vehicle health is finite, just like it was in the original game. This makes all vehicles more fragile. The Energizer Skull reduces the strength of your shield, but always has a charging. It's almost like the health system in Call of Duty, but not as extreme. The ODST Skull slows your movement speed so that it matches that of Halo 3 ODST. This can be combined with the Fog Skull in order to produce a result that makes the game play a lot more like ODST. Last up is Reaper. You have unlimited grenades, but you can only throw them when your shield is full. Throwing a grenade will instantly deplete your shield. Number 3. Customization An unplanned addition to SPV 3.3, this has quickly become one of the most important features. In SPV 3.3, you can now customize your armor to be one of several appearances. They are as follows. SPV 3, Mark 5, Mark V Remastered, Soy's The Old Lords, Mark V Evolved from the original Silent Cartographer Evolved release with some new visual upgrades, and the ODST BDU allowing you to don the armor of an ODST. You can also customize Cortana's appearance, allowing her to be purple or use her original Halo CE appearance. The SPV2 version of Cortana is also an option, as well as Windows 10 Cortana. Yes, that little circle will fly around and pulse as it talks, just as it does on whatever device you use Cortana on. We also have limited abilities for you to change the appearance of some of the levels, 
So as mentioned earlier, you can change the time of day for Silent Cartographer Evolve, but you can also change the sky and halo to make it appear as it did in some very old Xbox footage. Special thanks to Alt Sierra for letting us borrow this from his Halo pre-release mod. Finally, we have our new hint system. A common complaint about SPV3 is that people seem to not understand how or why certain weapons should be used. While there is certainly an argument that we should explain this better as you play, we have observed that some people just want to play through the game as they would later Halo games. SPV3 aims to be a more complicated version of the gameplay presented in Halo CE, rather than being a more accessible and casual game as the sequels were. There are also many streamers who are busy on focusing on their audience as they play, and they miss out on some of the details that a more focused player would pick up on. So we have developed the hint system. You can choose how often you would like hints to show up, or not at all. The hints are especially valuable for streamers, who can focus on their audience and also have snippets of information granted to them so they can both learn how to play and have topics to discuss with their audiences. It also allows seasoned players to learn more about the little known features such as weak spots on wraiths or that sprinting melee attacks can do more damage. Number 2. Firefight. While this was the biggest feature to be included in SPV 3.3 and has been a constant request, it ended up being downsized considerably. Firefight is single player only. There is no co-op with friends. Co-op will never work with SPV 3. We have actively stripped out all co-op codes to make room for our new features. However, the way we designed Firefight was in a way where it could one day be later ported to other Halo games assuming the necessary tools are developed. What we have settled on for this release is two maps, Rockslide from the Mission Halo and the Engine Room from the Maw. In these maps, we'll face 10 waves per round of enemies. You can configure how many rounds you must complete and how skulls will turn on and off for them. In addition to the classic survival modes, we have one called Squad Survival, where you'll be given marine allies at the start of each wave and infinite lives. However, if the marines all die, then you lose. There is also another mode called Juggernaut, which gives you all the unlocks starting at wave 1, but only a single life. So unlocks you say? Yes! For a small price of only $10, you can purchase- No, sorry, I'm just messing with you. There are no purchases to be made. In normal firefight outside of Juggernaut, you get a reward at the end of each wave. Waves 1-3 through three will give you a new upgrade to your armor, an armor ability, power up, or spawn extra ammo for you. Waves 4 through 6 will unlock you a new weapon, while waves 7 through 9 will give you new AI allies. And then the 10th wave will unlock you a hero character who will fight alongside you until you quit the game. These heroes are Johnson, Spartan May from Lemuria, Captain Keys wielding the Golden Gun, Brandon from Lemuria with his trusty Amp DMR, the Master Chief himself, and for the first time as an interactive character, Foehammer wielding the Grenade Launcher. The longer you play, the more things you unlock, and it's all randomly unlocked too so no playthrough will ever be the same as you can never predict what rewards will be unlocked. Skulls can also be randomized, providing playthroughs that will never be the same twice. Depending on how Firefight is received, we may do more maps in the future, as well as expand the modes and include an Elite vs. Flood mode, if people are enthusiastic about it. The way we developed Firefight was in a way where we could pump out a new map based on a campaign space in a weekend if we really dedicated ourselves. Finally, number one, MCC compatibility. While MCC continues to be a terrible mess, and Halo 1 is even worse than it was in 2014 when the MCC released, we have allowed the game to boot if it detects a valid install of Halo CE Anniversary. Halo CE is no longer sold in many areas of the world, and to get a valid CD key can be complicated, so a purchase of Halo CE Anniversary on Steam will now work instead. You can now make a secure purchase via Steam or the Windows Store. This feature is still being worked on and is the last thing we will need to complete before releasing SPV 3.3 currently planned for January 2021. So that's it, those are the top 10 changes for SPV 3.3. We will be making more videos about it in the future, specifically on the weapons, firefight, and skulls. What else would you like us to go into about SPV 3.3, and what changes are you most looking forward to? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more updates.